Okay, so one of the things that we left out when building our chat app over the course of the previous two videos was the small but useful feature we had in order to make the application automatically scroll to the bottom of our feed. So if we take a look back at the current state of our app, so everything is looking pretty good. I have the ability to post messages and um, style-wise everything looks good, except that notice if I refresh the page, our feed is at the top of the feed here, and the top of our feed, the way we have it set up, actually represents our oldest message. So what I would like to see is, when I refresh the page, have the feed all the way at the bottom. So that's the behavior you would expect, I would say, in a chat application, uh, particularly if you're used to using something like, say, Google Chat or Slack or any of these other types of chat apps. Um, when a user posts a message, we should scroll to the bottom. So you'll notice that even when I post this message, I have to scroll down to see it. So let's go ahead and write up some quick JavaScript that's going to allow us to do that. So we'll head back into our code now. And for this, we'll just need to head over into our chat room component. So head over to chatroomcomponent.ts. And we'll also be working in our chat room component template file. So you notice that when we wrote our template file previously, we included this hashtag scroller that is on our div that wraps the app feed component. And so this is a template reference variable here. Um, it, it's just going to allow us to actually use this variable in our component class here in order to reference this DOM element that's in our template. So note that this doesn't have anything to do with the styling of this component, which we're taking care of using the CSS class feed wrapper here. So this is a template reference variable that's going to allow us again to do something with this div or at least reference it here inside of our component class. So let's head over into our component code now. And we just need to make a few more imports to get this working. We're going to import viewchild, which is a decorator that we'll look at in just a minute. And we're going to import element ref, which we're going to use as a type. So we'll say at viewchild here in our class. And here we're going to pass it as a string. We're just going to pass that template reference variable. And we'll say private. And we'll just call this feed container is an element ref type. So element ref is going to give us access to the underlying DOM element. And our viewchild decorator here is going to give us access to the scroller template reference variable we have in the template. So viewchild is actually quite often, I would say, maybe used a little bit differently than this. We could actually pass viewchild any of the child components that we have on our chat room component and actually get access to those classes in the uh, container component here. So for instance, we could pass it the selector for our user list, our, our app feed, and our app chat form, because these are all actually children components of our chat room components. So if we head over to chat form component, for instance, we could pass our uh, child component decorator this chat form component and then actually have access to this class in our chat room component file. In our case, we're just going to make use of a little bit of a simpler use case here, just passing this template reference variable scroller. Again, this corresponds to this hashtag scroller that's on this div. In order for us to perform a method in our component that makes use of the DOM element that this template reference variable is attached to. So let's head back into our component here. And yeah, we're going to make use of something called after view checked. So actually, I forgot to import that here as well. We're going to import after view checked. So this is an Angular lifecycle method. Um, and it's going to, as the name implies, get called after the view is checked each time this view is checked. And we'll take a look at a diagram of the lifecycle methods for Angular components in just a moment. But for now, let's go ahead and write our method, ng after view checked. So this is what we'll get called. And we're going to write a scroll to bottom method that we'll call here each time the view is checked. And the linter is going to be upset that I need to go ahead and implement after view checked. So we'll do that. Okay, and clean up some white space. And then of course we need to write a scroll to bottom method on this class. So let's go ahead and do that. 
and I'm going to go ahead and type it as well just to be explicit. So it's a void method. It's not going to return anything to us. In fact, we just need it to perform the single action of scrolling that div all the way to the bottom. So there are probably a few different ways we could do this. I'm going to do it like this. We have access to our feed container now using this uh, template reference variable that we passed to the view child decorator. And so what we're going to say is this dot feed container dot native element. And that's again, um, element ref giving us access to the underlying DOM element that's on our div or which is our div here. And we have some properties that we have access to now. So all of the HTML DOM properties. So scroll top. And we're going to set that equal to the feed container dot native element dot scroll height. All right, so just to try to explain this a little bit, scroll top is just going to get us the number of pixels that the content of a div element is scrolled vertically. We also have, we could also call scroll left if you were doing, uh, if you had a case where you wanted to scroll like left or right on the page. In our case, of course, we're just concerned with scrolling vertically. So we're going to set the scroll top property here equal to the native element scroll height that is on this div. So uh, this div being the native element, it has a read only property scroll height, which should be the total height of that div. And so we're going to set scroll top equal to it. So in other words, scroll the entire height of the div. It's a little bit easy to get these confused because of their names. Um, scroll height should be a read only property that you're going to read from and scroll top can be something that we can actually set. So yeah, just to recap, um, what we're doing here is we are calling this after view checked lifecycle method and each time that method gets called we are going to then call scroll to bottom and that's going to set the amount that we've scrolled this div down to the total height. Keep in mind that scroll height here is going to work fine for us even though we have some overflow. Um, scroll height is actually going to represent the total height of that div including overflow even if it's off the screen as it would be in our case. And then just to recap very briefly about the after view checked lifecycle method. I think the best reference for this in order to get a good understanding of the order of the various Angular lifecycle methods is directly in the Angular docs. So if you take a look at their lifecycle hooks guide, you're probably familiar with ng on changes. So this is going to get called anytime we have like an input change on a component. We have the ng on init, and then we have these ng do check lifecycle methods, the last of which is our after view checked. And then we have ng on destroy as well if a component is destroyed. One that we're using here is this ng after view checked, which is going to respond after Angular checks the components views and child views. And that's within our ng do check, which is going to detect changes that Angular can't or won't detect on its own, called during every change detection run immediately after ng on changes and ng on init. So our ng after view checked is going to be called essentially after Angular checks the bindings of the component view. So it's concerned with our template changes, um, which in our case, our template's going to change anytime a new message is posted, um, changing the height of our div. And so we're going to go ahead and scroll to the bottom anytime that happens. So let's go ahead and go back to our page. And I'm going to, first of all, just do a scroll to the top and then do a refresh test here. Okay, and so that's looking good. We're now scrolling to the bottom. And now if I post a message, we can see that it instantly scrolls as well. So this is much more expected behavior for a chat application than to have the alternative, which is not to scroll at all anytime I post a message and to start at the top rather than at the bottom. So yeah, I, that was just kind of a, a quick fix. Um, although, like I said, I think it's a rather important feature of this application that you may want to include in your version of this app. Okay, so the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and remove this feed initializing that we were logging out just to kind of clean that up. So I'll head over here into our feed component TypeScript file. And yeah, we'll just go ahead and get rid of the feed initializing here as well. Okay, so I'll head back to the page, just refresh. And now that that's gone, everything is looking a little bit more clean. 
Okay, so that's it for this short video. I just wanted to share that because, like I said, I think it was a, an important part of this application. And the other thing I'd like to mention is that I've now posted this code up on GitHub, and all the code should be up to date. Um, if anything, if depending on whenever you're watching this video, I may have also made additional improvements to the code, so um, you should be able to follow along there if you have any questions. And of course, leave any comments or questions you have below as well. Also, if you got anything out of this video, I'd really appreciate it if you liked and subscribed, and perhaps consider supporting me on Patreon. I really appreciate all the support you guys give, and I would really love to continue to be able to make these uh, programming videos for free. So with that, I wish you all the best, and I'll catch you next time.